Hey, boss to Elena, the stitching farmer here. It's been a while since my last update. I was hoping to have done one more update before the baby came, but she surprised us and came a little early. I had an induction schedule, so I really didn't think I was gonna have her before then, but you know how that goes. Babies are on their own timeline. So the week leading up to her birth, we had a hurricane. So it was, so on Monday night I was at work and they were still deciding whether or not they were gonna close us down. And they kept going back and forth like, okay, we're gonna close it this time, no, we're not. So finally they decided just to, um, we closed Monday night and then we would not reopen on Tuesday. So all day Tuesday it rained and rained and rained. Not like a bad rain, just steady, continuous rain that just wouldn't let up. So <clears throat> finally Tuesday night is when the weather started getting pretty bad. Very windy and lots of rain still. Um, at midnight the phones were going off for a tornado warning or watch. Warning, yeah, warning's the one where you take cover. Which I did not, I was nine months pregnant and tired, so I was in my bed. So it's, so I wake up Wednesday morning and it's still just super windy, lots of rain. Y'all, this hurricane was moving at two miles an hour. It was the slowest hurricane. So it was only, it was category one, I think it did get up to category two but for the majority of it, it was just a one, which is a hurricane, it's still a hurricane. It's, you know, we just, no one expected it to be what it was. And it wouldn't have been that bad if it wouldn't have been so slow moving, but we just got rain just dumped on us and everything was flooding. Um, I'll insert videos over the backyard. And I got, a, I took a short clip of the hurricane and the part that I got, it wasn't even the worst of it. It was starting to let up. But like the trees were just swaying in the back. We actually lost one of our, we have two cedar trees and one of them started falling over. So of course my husband has to go out in the middle of this hurricane and push it the rest of the way over, which it might be good that he did because I guess it was ca caught up in the pipes or the sprinklers. And so he, he thinks it could have gone the other way if he wouldn't have gone out there and tipped it over. So he actually had to like cut the roots to get it to tip. So, and then the fence, we lost most of our fence. So Wednesday morning when we woke up, we still had our power. And I told my husband, I'm like, I'm really gonna regret saying this, but I can't believe we still have power. So I started making the coffee. It wasn't 10 minutes later and we lost our power. I was like, oh, I knew I was gonna jinx this. So I didn't get to have my coffee that morning. I was really disappointed. So it, it gets hot. You know, you don't have your power, so no AC. And of course it's September, so it's still hot. It's Florida. And I'm nine months pregnant and miserable. And ugh, I'm like, please, please, please don't go into labor. Cause that was due Sunday. So the whole time I'm just like thinking this baby's going to come, we're not going to be able to make it a hospital, I'm going to have a home birth. Thank God, though, it did not happen. She, she made it to, um, so Wednesday, it finally stopped around the afternoon, and I was supposed to go into work the next day, so we're like, let's see if I can even get out of our neighborhood, and so we're like driving down the streets, they're all flooded, there's no way out. I look over, the street is so flooded and there's a guy on a kayak like not even kidding he's just paddling away on his kayak all the kids are just like playing and i'm like oh i can <laughs> i just think it's gross but all this water from the hurricane but they were having fun no one has electricity no one has you know my boys didn't know what to do no fortnight no electricity no I want to play on my phone. I'm like, no, I have to conserve my battery in case anything does happen. So then Thursday, they called later that afternoon. They're like, okay, the store flooded. So no one's working Thursday either. And that was supposed to be my last day before my maternity leave started. So I was like, okay, well, that's kind of a relief. 
our power finally came back on. So we lost it Wednesday morning. It came back on Thursday morning around like 4 a.m. These guys, they work around the clock when there's a hurricane comes through and your power goes out. So we're very thankful for the Gulf Coast power for getting all of our power turned back on. <clears throat> Cause those are some hardworking guys and they work around the clock. So we were less than 24 hours without power. It wasn't, so it's not bad, but it, it was hot and it's miserable when you're nine months pregnant and you're already hot. So very thankful for that. Um, so Thursday, we had our power back on, so we just kind of laid around the house. I, I went Thursday night to go get groceries. First, I went to the neighborhood market. They were still closed, and I went to Publix. They were still closed, so I ended up just um, went to Firehouse. They were actually open and grabbing some subs, and everyone was supposed to open back up Friday morning. So Friday morning, laying in bed, I'm like, oh, I should really get up, shower, head to the grocery store and then I felt like this trickle I was like okay that was kind of weird and then I felt it again I had like a little contraction and so I stood up and I started like just gushing my water had broke so it wasn't it wasn't like you see in the movies though it was more of like a, a slow leak I guess so I wake up my husband and I'm like my water broke and I hop in the shower because there's no way I was going all day without taking a shower so then we make it to the hospital and I think it was like 6 a.m. when my water broke and she wasn't born until it was my longest labor. It was like 7 or 8 that night. I couldn't believe it, but I'll insert a video with her and tell the story of her birth because it's not like super exciting, but it's kind of interesting. And so... So now I've just been taking care of a newborn. I forgot how exhausting that is, but you know, it's also a great thing to have your little one. But it is tiring. Like she gets up usually around midnight, and then three, and then five. So usually around three times, but hopefully she'll be four weeks on Friday. So hopefully she'll start going a little bit longer soon. It's currently today is October 13th. It is also 87 degrees outside, so it is not fall weather that we're having right now. It's still hot, but hopefully soon. Um, i trying to think of anything else. I've just been enjoying my maternity leave. Oh, I was just going to take a few minutes and vent about U.S. maternity leave because I've heard about other countries. What great things you have in other countries for your maternity leave. So in the U.S., ours is called the FMLA, Family Medical Leave Act, and what it entitles you to is 12 weeks unpaid bonding time with your baby. That's it, 12 weeks, not even paid. Most countries do pay you for at least part of it. Um, my company just changed their policy, I think two years ago, so I'm getting six weeks of short-term disability and then eight weeks of bonding time with the baby. So 14 weeks, so it's a lot better than with my oldest, I only got to take six, and with my middle, I took seven, because I couldn't afford to, you know, I'm the, unfortunately, I'm the breadwinner, so we couldn't afford for me to take the full 12, because half of it would have been unpaid. So I'm very thankful this time I do get to take full time and spend that with my baby. So just interested to see what other countries your maternity leave is like. I've heard some countries get like one year, some get three years. It's just crazy to me. Hopefully eventually the U.S. will come around to seeing that mothers need more time off with their babies. It's hard to go back to work when you're still getting up two or three times during the night. So anyways, that's my life update. So y'all are all here for cross stitch, right? So let me insert a couple videos real quick of the hurricane in the video.
this is the aftermath of Hurricane Sally. We used to have two big cedar trees here, but one of them just fell over during the hurricane. And then this is our fence. Mm -hmm. Okay. That part of the fence is pretty bad. That tree is going to have to go to. Or bush. I don't know what it is. It looks pretty sad. My husband's trying to fix. It was all down. He put that part back up. And that part's down. Luckily, most of the posts are still up, so shouldn't be too bad. A lot of people had a lot worse damage than what we had, like flooding. So we were pretty lucky. I would introduce you to my little one. I guess I startled her a little bit. This is Vivian Nicole. We did decide to go with Vivian after all. My, that's what my husband really wanted to name her. <laughs> oh look, I got a smile. So, funny story about her birth. So, I think my water, it broke around 6 a.m. that morning. So, we went to the hospital. I remember being so worried that we weren't going to make it in time because the hospital is about a 45 minute drive. And she's my third baby, so I thought she would come quickly. So, I was in labor for hours and hours, and nothing was making my labor progress. They even gave me Pitocin drip. And so finally around 4 p.m. the doctor walks in and he's like, okay, something's going on here. We got to figure out what's going on because I have a history of having big babies. So he's like, let's get an ultrasound. So the ultrasound tech comes up and she's looking at the baby and she guesstimated her weight to be, she said between seven and a half, no more than eight pounds. And the doctor was like, are you sure? She said, yeah, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. She looks to be average sized. So he's like, okay, well, let's start pushing. So after, I think it was like two hours of pushing, she finally comes out and the nurse is like, that is a 10 pound baby. And so they put her on the scale and sure enough, she was 10 pounds, six ounces. She was the biggest of the three. I really thought that she would be the smallest since she's a girl and she actually came before her due date, which only by two days, but both the boys were late. But my oldest weighed, he was nine pounds, three ounces, and then the middle was 10 pounds, one ounce. So I thought maybe I'd finally get an average size baby, but nope, she was the biggest of them all. So that is little Miss Vivian. And we are so excited to ha add her to our family. So I'll let her go back to her nap. All right, so that was a during and after and then the introduction to baby Vivian. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, so now on to the cross stitching. I thought I have a couple, um, I have a couple of old finishes. They're not FFO'd yet. I thought by this time I would surely have them done, but they're still, they're stitched, but not anything done with them. And then also had a recent finish. So I was going to share that. So this is Pumpkin Hollow. It is stitched. Everything's the call for. I can't remember at this point what it was. Um, let's see if I can grab a, something to back it with. So I stitched everything as is. I'm not real good about changing things. I just tend to go with what it calls for. So it wasn't a long stitch and it's cute. I should do something with it. And then this is Lizzie Kate's Halloween Rules. That's a big one. All right, so I got the top and then really long. Everything stitched called for, even the fabric, which I can't recall what it was right now. And I really need to FF up this. I'm just not sure or if I could find a piece long enough. I mean, it's, it's good sized. So hopefully I will, hopefully next year. 
That'll be my goal is to FFO this because it's really cute. I like it a lot. I need to do the Christmas rolls next because I have everything needed for that one. <clears throat> um, what else is it going to say? This, I believe, is one, two, three. So this was six parts. And then the border you get off her website, the Lizzie Kate website, I can't remember. I can't remember if it's a blog or her webpage, but it does add up in price because there's six, but maybe if you bought like one a month, it wouldn't be so bad or one every other month. So that was fun. Stitch there. And then for my daughter, I wanted to stitch the V for Vivian. So it was a pretty quick stitch. I like all the beads. I did oops on the beads. I think one's over this way too far and one's too close to the V, but I was like, oh, it's such a headache to stitch it. When it's not around the cross stitch, like these are, these are easy. But when it's way out here and there's no cross stitching around, it's really hard for me using the invisible thread. And her skin, the picture, Look at how, what a color difference that is. Much darker. I don't know if it's a dye thing or if it's a photography thing. I know sometimes colors don't show up. So I always stitch the little beads on the diagonal and then the big beads, I stitch those going sideways. You can see there. So she was a pretty quick stitch although it took a little bit longer probably than it would for most people. I almost had it done before she was, she was born September 18th. I was still waiting on some of the beads though to get here. I was hoping to have it completed before she came. But I, w I was able to eventually get it done. So that was a fun one. Um, let's see, current whips here. I don't know if I have worked on this since the last time I've shown it. This is Vivian stocking here. It's um, Holiday Glow. I saw it on the Dimensions webpage. They are owned by Simplicity. They have a, a new cute stocking. They haven't come out with any cute ones in a while, but there's a new one on there that's I like. If I wasn't already doing this for her, I'd probably get it and do it. So this is my progress. Still working on the snowman scarf. I do like the detail. I'm just uh, kind of burning out on stitching the stockings, but this will be my last one. Really, I'm not, this is it, no more. Pretty sure I said about the last one, but for real this time. And um, let's see, I have a new star. I was watching Cross Stitch by Luda, her, um, her fall one that she did with all her fall finishes. I just I fell in love with the um, the Halloween quilt sampler. I think it's super cute. I love all the black work. I love all the different blocks. So I have a small start on it. Let me grab it here. So this is my little bitty progress so far. So this calls for to be stitched on 30 count week's dye work straw and one, two, three stitch did not have it in stock. So then I had to decide what I was going to stitch it for on. They didn't really have um, much in the 30 count variety. So I was like, okay, 28 or 32, which one? So I ended up going with 32 count 32 count vintage country mocha so that is what this is and word of advice this looks different on both sides i did not realize that but this one is just plain it must be printed on there and then this one you probably can't tell it's got that kind of coffee tea dyed look to it I'll flip it back over so you can see that this just looks plain 
and I did not realize that and so I'm stitching away I'm like I could have sworn this fabric was more variegated I mean what's the deal and I flip it over I'm like oh you got to be kidding me luckily I hadn't gotten terribly far all I did stitch was was this little black work here I hadn't done any of this block yet so I got to take all of that out flip it over and do it again like I just wasted an hour of my life that I will never get back but we all know how that is right I mean it's happened to all of us where we had a frog not fun but you get through it um so I'm using all the called for threads pretty autumn colors most of it is week's dye work there is one um thing seen black And you get this cute little spider. We'll go on the spider web portion. Right there on that one. So they're just um, pretty autumn colors here. And like I said, I'm pretty boring and I just tend to stitch on the call for the call for threads so look at all those pretty autumn pretty autumn colors and that's all week style work there again so I don't lose it And also had to grab this Rosewood Manor tart as well. This is the Tulip Quilt Sampler. Uh, look like that. That one is um, stitched with DMC. So that one's super cute. Um, and then last but not least, I have made a little progress on my shadow lane. Oh, I forgot. Someone asked me about my frames. I can't, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but these are the um, quantum frames. And they are made by Almanac Factory. I will link it below, but I love these frames. They are very similar to the one that are made in England, the Millennium frames, but they don't take anywhere near as long to get from what I've heard. And I've heard those you'll be waiting at least six months for. These I think I got in within a month. They come from, oh, I believe it's Estonia. So it did, it was expensive for the shipping. And it did take a little bit of time to get, but well worth it. Um, this, these are plastic, the Millennium frames. Um, it's like a tough plastic though. But the Millennium frames use wood and I have seen them break before. So that's the one good thing about these knock on wood. Haven't had them break or anything. One thing with these is, especially on the thinner fabrics like the linen, it will tend to slip out of the dowel. So I will take, I usually just take a piece of paper towel and cut it up and then put it in here too to kind of make it tighter. And that seems to work well, but you just twist this and you get that drum tight. I also have these. I got this from the Heaven and Earth Design website. I don't use it that often because I forget to undo it and it's not good for your fabric to stretch out. I'm pretty good about loosening up my tension this way. But I will forget to unclip these and then, you know, to have it like this all the time, it starts to distort the fabric. So I don't use them a lot, but if you can, they are good to have if you're good at remembering to undo them after you to get done stitching. So that is the um, quantum frame. They come in different sizes. It's in centimeters. So of course I had to get out my ruler because in the US we're still stuck on in them using the imperial system. So I have to think in inches to centimeters and grab out a ruler because my brain just doesn't work. It's like I'm in the medical field and it's so annoying using two systems because patients are weighed in, in pounds, but then everybody's dosed in kilograms. So you always have to 
convert the pounds to the kilograms and sometimes mistakes happen and it's like why can't we just go to the metric system i know it'd be a pain to do it but eventually it'd be worth it maybe someday so there is a bunch of different sizes for that um here's the i believe this is the biggest size that my shadow lane is on and it's quite large as you can see um, so progress on this. I'm still working on the borders. I have made pretty good progress. I ran out of one of the thread colors and had to order it and it took like two months to get here. So I finally got that in. So I'm going to start working on it again. And all I've really got to do is the rest of the border. Um, there's one more gate to do up at the top here. And then um, the beading. There's quite a bit of beads. She's, I think the baby's starting to wake up, so I'll have to wrap this up. Um, I'm just gonna show real quick plans. Kathy, she's so sweet. She sent me a, a few patterns. She sent me three. I put one away already, but she sent that one. That one's the baby boat, number 16. And this one, this is my favorite. This is Mother's Arms. I was watching um, Donnie Stitcher, I believe is what her channel is called, and she stitched this. And so this is all completely stitched, the old thing. But she left out the blue and just used a colored fabric or a hand dyed fabric to stitch it on so she didn't have to stitch all that blue, which I thought was pretty smart. But she has like this huge wall of mirabilia finishes behind her when she films her videos and I believe that's on the wall. But I really do love this pattern and hopefully I'll get to stitch it someday. It's, it's a big one though. There's a lot of stitching there. Love that one. And also for my daughter, I want her to stitch this. So she was born in September. This is the September Sapphire Fairy. And she reminds me of Geisha like with the fairy wings though. And then she's got butterflies in her um, bird cage thing. I think she's really pretty. She's got uh, the Krynic blending filament and some Mill Hill beads and then one Karen watercolor and then of course a bunch of DMC. She's got four, very, four of the blends, not my favorite thing to do, but it's not so bad. And then I'm also working on um, an EPP piece which is English paper piecing, the Tula Sunrise. So got, this is using their um, Tula Pink's Monkey Wrench fabric line. So basically what you do is you use a template, cut out these pieces in the fabric, and then you glue them onto the paper, and then you stitch them together. By hand so it, it does take some time I believe there's I want to say there's 16 of these I've done one so far and then you got to put them all together and put the borders on and then quilt it all so the English paper piecing is a long process but it's, it's fun to do it's it's a good project that doesn't require a lot of thinking so I can just sit on the couch and whip stitch while I'm taking care of the baby. So that, that makes it something easy. You don't have to like look at a pattern or anything like that. The hard part was putting it all, like all the cutting it out and putting paper on it. I'm sure it's gonna get harder once the quilt gets bigger and still happen to stitch it all together. But it's, it's something different, it's fun, I like it. And so um, 
I just had one other video I was going to share with you. I did a tour of my craft room. So I'll just put that on at the end. And if y'all have any questions, just ask below in the comments. I can always do more videos. Hoping maybe soon I'll start trying to do some more videos, more updates than I have been doing. It's just, it was so hot this summer. I just didn't really feel like stitching. So I didn't get a whole lot of stitching in and I just didn't have a whole lot of progress to share with you guys. So hopefully, uh, taking care of a newborn, I probably won't have much stitching time still, but maybe I can try to squeeze them in at least like an hour a day. My husband's pretty good about helping me out most of the time, but we have two other kids too. And uh, old as he's in third grade, so he's got a lot of homework every night that I usually have to help him with. But that's about all for live updates and my stitching progress. So. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe, and hopefully I'll start getting some more videos out. And so I hope you enjoy the tour of my craft room. If you have any other questions, just ask below, and I'll either answer you in the comments or address it in my next video. All right. See y'all later, guys. All right, guys. So I promised you a tour of my craft room once I got it all set up. So this is it. Oh, it's a mess. I guess I should have picked up first. So this is the Ikea desk and cabinets, or um, not cabinets, but shelf that I was waiting on. Um, it's a, the shelving units are the calyx and the table is two lemons put together, I believe. It might be backwards, I'm not sure. So this is my cutting mat side. I am currently working on the Christmas fix quilt pattern. Let me see if I can grab it here to show you guys the cover. Or I guess it's a very coriander Christmas that features Christmas fix. I'm also doing the Halloween fix one too. I'm not sure where that pattern is. I think I have it put up somewhere. So I'm very happy with the way this turned out. It was quite expensive to ship it. But, and then there's all kinds of storage space. And uh, I really should have picked up first. Sorry, guys. Then my uh, mother-in-law got me this floor lamp here at a yard sale. So it's nice to have some extra light. The lighting in here is really bad. During the daytime, it's good because I have this huge window. This is the ironing board here. My puppy dog, Lola. Hi, pretty girl. Also share it with the computer, which is also a mess. And so this is where I store cross stitches. So let's see. Oh, uh, let me see here. Where's so like say this one is full of dimensions petites here. So we've got all kinds of different. Little ones here. I've actually stitched this one before. I think my mom has it. I should probably try to get it back. I don't think it ever got framed. That one I want to do for mine and my husband. Someday maybe. Thought that one was pretty cute. And then these are like all the little ornaments that they release every year. It's not an ornament, but so that's how I store patterns and some of the small dimensions collections. Sorry.
sorry guys on that one. All right, so let's see. This here is Tulip Pink. She is probably one of my favorite fabric designers. I love her fabrics. So I'm making the Tula Sunrise EPP kit, which is um, English paper piecing. So basically it's hand sewing. This was the Monkey Wrench fabric collection. Here is the finished product. So far I've only completed one of the round pieces. I meant to grab it, but I forgot. I got the Etoile collection. I've never stitched with it, so I don't know how it stitches up. And then I'm not even trying to pronounce. I should pull it out and try to stitch something with it though. See here, this have some project bags. This is what you need to finish um, the Blackbird Designs, one of the Halloween pieces. And just get it at Hobby Lobby and stain it. I haven't obviously I haven't done that yet. Um, has some made by Mama Joan project bags here. This one's one of the Blackbird Designs fabrics. Very pretty. So this is how I store my thread. So I have a full collection of DMC. I bought it from Hirschner's back before the price went up uh, quite a bit. It's probably been five years ago that I bought the the full set. And it's debating. It's, it was a lot of work to wind on bobbins, but I was like, I want to do just 10 a day. And so that's what I did because there's uh, 454 colors, I believe. And so it took like a month and a half to do. So I'm missing some colors because I take them out as I need them and just throw them in a um, Ziploc baggie. That way I'll have it all together. Got some little needle minders. This is what I bead um, Mirabilia's with. It's quite a pain. And here's an open one here. It's invisible, so Unless your beads are next to cross stitches, they're hard to see. Um, this is Sulky. I used to grits Hades with this. I love needle minders. Look at that cute little box. Love it. Um, some leftover Krynek. So that's first. So these are um, art bins. Oh, I can't remember. I want to say I got them off of Amazon. Probably not me. All right, here is, and the most of the needle miners I get from um, Gina's needle miners on Etsy. Like this one I know came from there. I don't know if it's still available, but I really liked. I don't think it's pretty heavy though, so I don't think I've actually used it to put on a cross stitch. Just some extra white and black. And then the last one. I was lucky enough to discover Clay by Kim before she got wildly popular. Now it's impossible to get needle minders unless you go on eBay and pay a lot of money for them. Also have some um, more Gina's. Oh, here's her. They kind of all get stuck together though. Some really cute ones on her shop, though. Really cute Christmas, and I have two of these. One's a little bit different color. Christmas kitty. Love this octopus. Look at this flamingo. It's adorable. 
my kids like to play with the needle minders. Peacock. Bicycle. Owl. I used to use this one quite often. And they're very strong. I love her needle minder cases. Somewhere I have a peacock one too. I don't see it in here though. Not sure where it went to. This one, dragonfly. They just slide. It's hard to do one handed though. So here's my play by Kim. I had to put each one in its own little individual because had one. I think this one's probably my favorite of the peacock colors. Have one crack though. Bumblebee. Christmas. A red and gray. A little peacock one. This is the one that, no, that one's not the one that, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> cracked. Little sunflower ladybug. And that one'd be good for fall. I should grab, pull that one out. Oh, here's the one chipped right here. Oh, right here too. So now I keep them all in their own little separate. I can't see what I'm doing. Halloween candy corn candy. Little flower. Cauldron. And more dragons. Oh, pretty. Oh, let's see. Oh, here's Valentine's. This one. Starfish with a little seashell. Uh, here's some Christmas ones you can just put the little snowflake on it. Be good for this time of year too, it's kind of like sunflower colors. And then last, another kind of fall colored one. Oh, here's a, another purple one. So that's my Clay by Kim collection. I feel very fortunate to have what I do because they're so hard to get now. show you guys that's not a mess. This is part of the tulip pink English paper piecing. You cut them out with this and then you put glue the paper onto it or glue the fabric onto the paper pieces. And it's too heavy to pick up and I'll leave it right there. Oh here's this is starting to glue them together. So this is what you glue. These are all that I've cut out. And then I've still got to glue it onto here. And then you can stitch them together. Here's one that's been glued down waiting for me to stitch. That's my mess. Uh, let's see, here's some. This is the, oh, here it is. Halloween fix sampler. So there is some applique on this. That's appliqued. I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I might do a raw edge. It's the easiest. Oh, I have to re-iron that. A little eight-point star. Some of them are a little wrinkled. I love these little pinwheels. They're so cute. Got quite a few of those. So that's a 
this the Halloween fig sampler. Still working on my lady scrap basket. This is how the raw edge applique. I'm not the best, but oh, baby's starting to wake up. Just show. And my favorite part of the sewing room would have to be my sewing machine. So this was a big splurge. It was quite expensive, but I love it. So it's the Tulip Pink Bernina 770. I love the um, rainbow finish here. More rainbow, oh, more rainbow finish. So this is my sewing machine and then gotta have a TV. This is actually the first flat screen TV we ever bought. It is like 12 years old, I think, but it still works. So that's all that matters. I got a, um, I can't remember if I have an Amazon Fire Stick or a Roku plugged into it. So that works good. We don't have cable. We cut our, we cut the cord. We weren't watching it enough, so. We just have um, Roku's on all the. Oh, here's the they call it the Barbie box that goes with it, like her little shoe box, you know, set for it's for those kind of feet. And this machine also embroiders. I've played around a little bit with the embroidery function, but not a whole lot yet. So that was my sewing room tour. Anything else you guys want to see more of, I can come back and you know let you take a look at whatever you want to see. So just comment below if I missed something. That's the embroidery module in the corner there. Next time I'll tidy up though first. <laughs>